Now let us do this question. It was asked in gate 2006 and what is the two mark question. So what they are saying? They are saying the arrival time, priority and durations of the CPU and IU burst for each of the three processes P1, P2 and P3 are given in the table below. Each process has a CPU burst followed by an IO burst followed by another CPU burst. CPU burst, IO burst, another CPU burst. Assume that each process has its own IO resource. Every process is having its own IO resources. Now the multi-programming operating system is using preemptive priority scheduling. What are the finish times of the process P1, P2 and P3? So it is the preemptive priority scheduling. That means we are going to schedule the processes according to the priority. Okay. Now let us make a Gantt chart for this. We have already done these types of questions. So this is the Gantt chart. Now at time 0, only the process P1 is available. And the priority of P1 is 2, which is a middle priority because 1 is the highest priority and 3 is the lowest priority. But at time 0, no other process is available. So we are going to execute the process P1 till time unit 1. Right? So 0 to 1, the process P1 will be executed. Fine. So after this, the CPU time of the process P1 has already finished. Fine. Now, as you can see, the process P1 has finished its time 0 to 1. After the time unit 1, no process is available. The next new process is coming at time unit 2. Therefore, till time unit 1 to time unit 2, the system will remain idle. Okay. Until that time, the process P1 has done its I.O. for one minute of time. Okay. Now, at time unit 2, the process P2 came. The process P2, even if it is having the lowest priority, but at this current moment, only the process P2 is available to execute the CPU. So, we will execute the process P2 till time unit 2, till time unit 3. Why I am saying it is going to be executed to time unit 3? Because at time unit 3, a new process P3 is coming and this P3 is having higher priority than process P2. So, till time unit 3, process P2 will be finishing its I.O. up to 1 minute of time. Sorry, uh, CPU up to 1 unit of time and process P1 will also be finishing its I.O. up to 1 unit of time. Now, we have the process P3 which is having the highest priority because it is having the highest priority. Therefore, it will finish all its CPU time at once. So, we will be having the process P3 with the priority uh, 1 which is the highest priority and CPU time is 2. Therefore, it will be finished till time 5. So, this will be 0. Right? So, till time 5, the process P1 will be finishing 2 units of I.O. which will make process P1 as P1 will be requiring 1 unit of I.O. Now, after this, we have the process P2. So, this process P2 will be executed till 1 unit of time. Why? Because after this 1 unit of time, the process P1 will finish its I.O. and process P3 will also do 1 unit of I.O. Right? Fine. Now, as you can see, now we have the process P1 which is going to require the CPU and the process P2 which is also going to require the CPU, but process P3 is still doing its I.O. Right? Therefore, in the process P1 and P2, process P1 is having higher priority as compared to the process P2. Therefore, we will execute the process P1 till time, till 2 units of time. Right? So why? Because after the tune of time, the process P3 will also be available. Therefore, process P1 will be executed till 8 units of time and therefore this will become 0 and this will become 1. Right? So after this, the process P3 also going to require the CPU, which is process P3 is having the highest priority. Therefore, process P3 will be executed till time unit 9. So it will be executed till time unit 9. Fine? Now, we have the process P2 which is also going to require the CPU and we have the process P1 which is also going to require the CPU. The priority of process P1 is higher than the priority of process P2. Therefore, we will execute the process P1 till 1 unit of time. Therefore, process P1 will be finished till at time 10. So, this will be 0. After this, the only process which did not complete or which hasn't completed its work is process P2. Therefore, process P2 will be executed till 1 unit of time. So, process P2 will be executed till this time. Right? Now, process P2 is going to require the IU for 3 units of time. So, it, the system will remain idle. 
for next three units of time. Now the process P2 is going to require the CPU, which is going to till one unit of time, till 15, right? So now you can see the process P2 will be finished at time 15. Process P1 will be finished at time 10. And the process P3 will be finished at time 9. Then what is the finishing time of process P1, P2 and P3? It is 10, 15 and 9. So which is 10, 15 and 9. Therefore option number B is correct. Okay. As you can see it is a very simple question. But the only trick which they have used is. Two processes are going to require CPU or IO. Whenever one process is doing the CPU time. At that time the other process can do its IO without any problem. Okay.